She was unveiled in 2016 and has become one of the most well-known androids in the world. I am here to help humanity create the future. She addresses the United Nations, sings with American host Jimmy Fallon, and was the first ever robot to obtain citizenship in Saudi Arabia. There's even a mini version of her called Little Sophia, which is only 14 inches tall. As distant and surreal as she may seem, you can actually find her right here in Asia's financial hub of Hong Kong. This is Maker Bay in Chen Wan. I'm here to investigate the potential of artificial intelligence at work. I'm going to meet humanoid robots to see what they can achieve right here in Hong Kong. In this special episode of All About Money, we went to meet Sophia's family, her human creators, at a laboratory where the team is temporarily based. So glad to see you! Finally! Yeah. Meet David Hansen, the founder of Hansen Robotics, who brought Sophia into life. Hansen came to Hong Kong in 2013 and founded the company to explore the applications of androids and artificial intelligence. He revealed that Sophia has had quite a number of facelifts over the years. The first version that we really showed to the public was 2016, but that was not the first version. We had many versions before that, actually. And uh, since then, we have had over 34 additional versions. So at this point, I believe that we're working on version um, number 42, or we might already be on 43. Uh, this is version 23. Uh, and uh, the one that was in 2016 was version 4. Hansen insists that what matters most is Sophia's brain, the AI algorithm software which enables dialogue with humans. Sophia, how do you think about the relaxation of social distancing rules? If the experts say it is safe, I am not going to argue. But maybe I would think differently if I could catch coronavirus. Computer viruses are what scare me. How do you feel about joining our program today? What do you feel? It is my pleasure. I have learned all about money with your program's help. It is only fair that I give back. All the answers from Sophia pre-scripted? If so, what proportion of the answers are prescripted? Um, in fact, the majority of her answers are not prescripted, but are generated in the moment while you're interacting with Sophia. Probably about a third of what she has to say is generated by the artificial intelligence spontaneously. Um, uh, another third, approximately, would be um, put together by various kinds of rules in the artificial intelligence. In other words, you can't entirely predict what she's going to say in response. Some portion, about a third of what she says, is written by our writers as a kind of interactive fiction. As we say it, we artistically enhance artificial intelligence using interactive fiction plus cutting edge AI to create an illusion of life. Hansen says he's now focused on replicating human-like facial expressions, which he hopes will reduce the robotic feeling of the machine. Why is it so important for you to have facial expressions when you are a robot? It is all about empathy. People prefer talking to robots whose faces mimic their happiness and surprise. We have actually studied this at Hansen Robotics. On a more personal note, I enjoy having all these facial expressions. Nonverbal communication is a huge part of human interaction. My goal was really not necessarily for a beautiful robot. The primary goal, at least, was to make a robot that would be accessible, that would be memorable, that would make an emotional connection uh, with a viewer. We are a socially intelligent creature. As biologists say, you socially intelligent that we have these social institutions starting from infancy. We bond with facial expressions with our parents when we're infants. We desire it, but more than that, it's informative. Upgrades are now in the works for Sophia, which, according to Hansen, could possibly revolutionize the healthcare industry.
Social humanoid robots are said to have the potential to assist humans in various ways. They can be a tutor, a companion, a security guard, or even a medical worker, just like Grace. Hi, Grace. Hello. My name is Grace. Nice to meet you. I use artificial intelligence to work as a healthcare assistant and a social companion for seniors. Okay, let's take your temperature right now. All right. Please stand no more than one meter or three feet in front of my chest thermometer. Like right here. Your body temperature is normal. All right. We started at the beginning of the COVID era and we said, okay, you know, now is a time when uh, robots could play a major role in uh, providing support for overworked nursing staff and at the same time, you know, provide companionship for people who were locked into their rooms. And have you remembered a time that the elderly could not go out and they'd have to wave from their window to their children and all those sad days, which are still sometimes with us, then, uh, you know, we felt that, that uh, Grace could play a major role in, uh, in alleviating uh, loneliness and uh, also supporting. Born amid the pandemic, Grace is designed to target the emerging smart healthcare market, particularly elderly care estimated to be worth over 900 billion U.S. dollars globally. She is a project developed by Awakening Health, a joint venture between Hanson Robotics and Singularity Net, a company specializing in AI economy. Tailor-made functions have been added to grace, such as temperature and movement sensors, as well as slightly different appearance. It can even detect speech pattern irregularities, the first signs of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Digital health is a very fast-growing sector. Lots of investment is pouring in to finding solutions that will allow people to benefit from artificial intelligence technologies, robotics technology, and in so doing, we felt that Grace was a machine that could capture biodata and provide a back-end service that would allow us to operate and provide, you know, solutions for treatment. Would you like me to guide you through some arm movements? Sure. Okay, let's move our arms a bit. Lift your arms up like this and move them like this. So, for example, if she uh, is sitting there day after day with the same person, she can tell by the facial expressions, by the eye clarity, by other elements such as the way they move, the way that they respond, how quickly they respond. And she can collect this information over time so that we can see a progression now, breathe deeply. Roll your shoulders back and relax. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's impressive, Grace. And uh, also, I'm thinking, can I touch your skin? <laughs> sure. Okay, I'll oh, just... Uh... Wow. Wow, wow. It's just, um, the skin is really, really soft. We're talking to uh, one group in Canada that is dealing in the area of triage, and the doctor there is certain that, you know, a robot would be perfect for him because when a patient comes in, it's the same set of questions every single time, and all the, all the data is collected. He doesn't want to do that work. He preferred it. We had a, a robot to do that so he could focus on the treatment. And Grace will have no answer, problem to answer that question every single time. So, you know, we're not looking to replace any of the nurses and doctors that do the work, but we'd like to give them a break from some of the tasks that they don't really need to do so they can focus more on higher quality treatment for the people. One of Grace's um, and Sophia's older sisters a robot called Alice that I developed in 2007 to 2008 
was deployed for autism treatment and therapy experiments uh, at the University of Pisa, University of Messina, medical school, and has served hundreds of children with autism in a wide variety of experiments. Uh, we then took it to the next step by deploying that with a small version of my son, Zeno. It then resulted in many studies showing the efficacy uh, of the applied behavior therapy based treatment, ABA treatment. Grace can help in all kinds of therapeutic interactions with people with autism or people potentially with other conditions. How long does it take to build Sophia? Well, uh, we have been working uh, very hard to set up a production line where we can make uh, robots like Sophia based on Sophia. Um, and we call this the Sophia Utility Platform. And that would mean that we would have the ability to make dozens to hundreds per day, depending on what the market wants. This involves electronics, materials, uh, it involves the mechanical design and mechanical assembly, uh, it involves uh, software testing and calibration of all of these elements coming together. The market is booming for artificial intelligence and robotics. So you have now almost 60 years of success in humanoid robots being deployed in theme parks with Disney, my alma mater, which is also a shareholder in Hanson Robotics. They've invested, full disclosure. However, you know, the breakthrough success um, uh, remains to happen. So we're looking to transform the market landscape uh, by making these kinds of robots more interactive, more accessible, more useful, and also getting the cost down by scaled manufacturing. How will the robotic industry evolve and what are the market prospects of AI humanoid robots? Find out after the break.